Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is about flight test tales about the F-104, the NF-104, and Daryl's Red Baron. Now, this is an F-104 that was owned by NASA Dryden at the time. These have all been retired, and one's in the uh, museum out there at Edwards. But at the time when I was out there in the late 70s, these were operational. I got a chance to fly several flights with the, uh, the NASA guys, um, test pilots, previous X-15 uh, pilots, and we did uh, shuttle approaches, simulated shuttle approaches in this, and I, I talk about those in another video. But the F-104 uh, was a very interesting and very fun aircraft to fly. And it was used in the test pilot school to simulate low-lift, high-drag uh, approaches, uh, such as in the X-15 and the X-20 dinosaur program, uh, proposed program, which was, which was later canceled. But they decided they wanted an aircraft that they could use to train um, future astronauts, and they wanted high altitude capability. So they uh, contracted to uh, with uh, Northrop to build uh, an NF-104. Now this aircraft had a reaction control system because it was going to go very high altitudes, and it had eight pitch and yaw thrusters and four roll thrusters, and they used hydrogen peroxide. Uh, to operate these thrusters. Now, a typical NF-104 profile was that start a zoom climb, and you'd start at 35,000 feet, you'd accelerate to 1.9 Mach, and then you'd fire the rocket engine. Now, this was an engine that used 90% hydrogen peroxide and 10% uh, JP-4, and you could throttle it from full throttle to about 50% throttle. Now, they'd start it at uh, 1.9 Mach, 35,000 feet, like I mentioned, and uh, they would reach 2.1 Mach, and then they'd pitch it up to about a 50 to a 70 degree angle. Uh, it took about a 3.5 G pull, and the J79, if, uh, you, if you left it running, you could have a problem with over-speeding and over-temping, so they shut it down at, a, at about 70,000 feet, and... Uh, uh, then um, the aircraft kept zooming, and um, it would go up to altitudes uh, around 120,000 feet or so. Now this is a picture of the NF-104 with the little um, hydrogen peroxide engine firing. Three of these aircraft uh, were built, and the first one was tail number 756, and it was accepted by the Air Force in 1 October 1963, and it established an unofficial altitude record of 118,860 feet. And it surpassed this in December of 63, going up to 120,800 feet. Uh, in June 63, uh, they had an a oxidizer tank explode and it suffered some damage. And it also suffered an in-flight rocket motor explosion in June of 71. And the pilot landed safely in both of these situations but that ended the program. There was a second NF-104, and this was accepted by the Air Force in 26 October of 1963. It was tail number 760, and this is the aircraft that's mounted on the pole outside of the test pilot school, and you can see it there uh, to this day. Parts of this aircraft were loaned to Daryl Greenemeyer, they were placed on the static display. Parts of them were loaned to Daryl Greenmeyer, who was going to attempt uh, the altitude and speed record in, in the NF-104. And I'll talk about him in just a minute. The third NF-104 was uh, delivered to the Air Force in November 63, and it was destroyed in a crash while being piloted by Chuck Yeager on 10 of December 1963. And of course, if you've seen the right stuff or read the book, um, Jaeger, uh, he talks about it, and uh, he basically got into a spin at high altitude, and once you get the F-104 into a spin, uh, it's not recoverable, and um, he, he had to punch out. This is a, a picture of the aircraft uh, when it, after it had <laughs> impacted the ground. I also want to tell you about Daryl Greenemeyer. I don't know, uh, outside of the racing circuit, if a lot of People are familiar with Daryl, but Daryl was a very interesting guy. He's known mostly for his uh, racing adventures, 
Um, he worked for Lockheed and uh, became an SR-71 pilot at the Skunk Works. And he also won the first victory in the Unlimited class at Reno Air Races in 1965. And he's the third most successful competitor at the Reno Air Races. And in October 24, 1977, he uh, modified a uh, F-104. He called it the Red Baron and uh, set a speed class record. This was a low altitude record of uh, 988.26 miles per hour um, over the mud flats in Utah. And uh, this record still holds. Now he spent 13 years building this aircraft and he got parts from junkyards. He borrowed uh, parts from various uh, people and individuals. And he basically put this thing together uh, with spare parts. And, and that itself is, is quite, a, quite an interesting uh, tale. Well, it was a Saturday, and I'm out with the uh, family at the uh, McDonald's in Mojave and having lunch, and all of a sudden I hear the very distinctive sound of a F-104. And I look out the window, and I see it's the Red Baron, and it looks like he's landing at the Mojave Airport. So uh, we were just finishing up, and I said, hey, let's go on out there. So I go on out there, and, and Daryl had just landed. He was doing some uh, preparatory uh, flights for the altitude record in uh, his 104, and he had had a um, nitrous oxide hose uh, blow out, blow out a pan on that. And uh, naturally, he wasn't very happy. And I thought, well, gosh, I wish I had my camera, but I didn't. But uh, he'll be he'll be operating out of the airport uh, next weekend, and, and I'll get a picture of that. Well, uh, that didn't work out quite as well as I thought. Well, I was talking to Daryl, and uh, since I was the, uh, the officer in charge of current operations, I said, hey, you know, I, I talked to you on the phone, and this was me in person, so... Uh, we had a nice little chat there. Now, it was interesting. Uh, General Yeager, who had, uh, you know, uh, spun out in the NF-104, uh, would set in for General Stafford at the uh, the daily briefings and being uh, officer in charge of current operations, you would brief the general on uh, what transpired that day in the flight test activity, anything unusual, stuff like that. And like I said, General Yeager would uh, set in for General Stafford at times. And during this time, um, I had the uh, chance to uh, chat with General Yeager, and I said, well, what do you think of Daryl's uh, attempt at the, uh, the altitude record? And, uh, of course, uh, General Yeager can uh, have some interesting res and colorful responses, to say the least. And uh, he didn't think too much of the reaction control system. He says, I spun out of the uh, thing, <laughs> and uh, I had a much better reaction control system than what he's got on that thing, and he, he didn't. He didn't give him uh, much chance to uh, to make the uh, the altitude uh, record. Didn't give him a lot of credit for that. Well, unfortunately, next week next week on a Sunday was February twenty sixth, nineteen seventy eight, and he was doing some of the prep work for the high altitude um, attempt. And, uh, of course, he never he never really got too close to achieving the high altitude attempt. Uh, on this flight, he uh, had a problem uh, getting the gear extended. And, and there's a long history of F-104s with gear problems and uh, especially something with the main gear and people trying to uh, save the aircraft and uh, none of it ever worked out well. So the only thing you could really do was punch out. And after he'd put so much work, so much time and so much effort in the aircraft, he, uh, he had to leave it. And it impacted uh, out in our test area, the impact, uh, precision impact range, we called it the Pyra. And uh, that's where pieces of the aircraft uh, ended up. Uh, the uh, Being a Sunday, uh, current ops wasn't staffed and uh, we had nobody on duty. And, and one of the sergeants called in uh, one of the other um, uh, operators, one of the other uh, uh, people involved in it. And uh, they came out to kind of coordinate the activity. And I felt bad about that because I was the standby guy and I should have been called, but things like that happen. Anyway, Daryl Greenemeyer passed away in, in 2018. And he was an, he was an interesting guy. Um, you may be familiar with, uh, I believe it was a Nova program that talked about their attempt to rescue the key bird. It was a B-29 aircraft, which had crash-landed in Greenland in 1947. And they went up there, they restored the aircraft, 
They were getting ready to fly it out, but on the 21st of May, 1995, um, I believe it was an APU fire. The aircraft uh, caught on fire and was destroyed, and Rick Krieg, uh, one of the engineers, was, was killed uh, in the fire. Very unfortunate event. A uh, person lost their life. The aircraft was destroyed, and, and that was the end of it. But uh, Darrell was a very interesting individual. He was also active in drag racing, and he owned several classic Ferraris. Anyway, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it.